Jersey, Jensen Ackles. It's different. It's different. It's different with the one chair. It's right. You know. I, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Um. I forgot my phone backstage, I, I, I was going to, uh, well, shoot, we'll just do it right now. I wanted to record something for Jared. So, I don't have anything in mind, I just was going to record you guys sending love his way. So, uh, what's that? FaceTime him! FaceTime? No. No, because that, yeah, no. <laughs> so I, I'd be mad at him if he did that to me. Uh, all right, let me just, uh, uh, hey pal, a um, few people here want to say hi. All right. We love you, miss you, get better, bye. Alright, let's get this right way. It is, it is, it is strange, you know? It reminds me, let me tell you a tale. Uh, when I was shooting the, um, the heaven scene, driving the Impala in the final episode, and, uh, I got in that car, and, had this, I was driving down the, the, this, this highway up in uh, North Vancouver and they had a drone that was following me and filming me so that meant that I was literally behind the wheel by myself in the car, no camera, no, no crew, no nothing, no Jared. Mm -hmm. And that was the last time that I drove the car uh, on the show. And it was very, it was a little moment there. I was like, it's weird being by myself. It was weird not having, uh, not having my uh, co-pilot, um, but he'll be back, he'll be fine, we're good, yeah. and uh, yeah. because I am uh, a highly codependent, clearly, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I asked somebody to fill in for him, so if you guys don't mind, uh, <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, I was actually gonna introduce Brianna, but that, you'll, 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 you'll do. Um, this is awkward. This is this is this is awkward now. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Misha Collins. Hi. How's it going, pal? It's going okay. How's it going for you? Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going. We're yeah. going. Yeah. We're making it happen. Um, it is strange not having Jared anchoring the show. I, I realize without him here how much we all depend on him so completely. Um, he's like, he's the only one who really shows up and, and gives attention to the fans. And <laughs> He actually, he, I've noticed like, oh, the thing that's missing, like, he cares about people. And obviously, we lack that quality. Clearly. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's, he's really the, the uh, oversized, hairy glue that keeps this all, keeps this all together here. Uh, it actually is funny, when we were doing the trio photo ops, like, Jared is literally the oversized, hairy glue that holds those photo ops together. He's, I, I realize that we just stand there, he envelops us from behind, and that's how we do the photo. And today we were doing them, but it was just you, me, and Alex, or you, me, right, and, right. and Mark, and none of us knew what to do. It was like each one was another awkward family photo. <laughs> yeah. That was it. Just waiting for somebody to come in and bring us together. Um. <laughs> You're not lying. But it smelled better. It did. It did, yeah, and and there were less uh, less ass grabs uh, <laughs> during the photos, um, mildly less. Uh, Jer a, Jersey showed up. This is something that I don't know. I don't know if, how often we talk about this, but very often during photo ops with Jared, Jared will reach down and where no camera or other humans can see, will grab your ass and squeeze or pinch. Or but it's not a caress. It's, it's, it's intended to inflict pain. So it's, it's like, he's not like, oh, there's a tush. It's like, where's the bone? And let me, let me, uh, get, uh, uh. Right. And so you do see a lot of photos where Jensen and my expression is like this. Mm -hmm. But then in that same photo, you'll see Jared's face is like this. Because it's, he's, he's searching and he's like, Oh, I've got it right there. There's, there. That's that. That's the entire hamstring that I'm holding now. Um, good times. Good times. Yeah, you, you've been bruised. Yes, I have. In, yeah. in photo ops. People don't know what we go through. <laughs> we gird ourselves. We wear padding for photo ops. <laughs> this is true. Um, well, thanks for coming out, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is a, this is a treat. Yeah, uh, it is. We, we, we don't really get to do this very often. We don't. We do it in Rome. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's usually after a long weekend of binging, mm -hmm. and yeah. um, there's a lot of... Television shows, like we binge, right. watch things. Streaming services. Right. Yes, too. Yeah. What are you thinking about? Yeah. Oh, what? Shame on you. Get out of here. Yeah. We're all binging um, at the same time. We're all binging at the same time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is, uh, yeah, this is nice. This is cool. Let's take some questions. Okay, great. They're probably not going to be for you, so just there. Uh... <laughs> or maybe they will. You, you want to go that way? Okay, let's go this way. We're going to go. Which way do you want to go? We'll, we'll go. This, this does not work very well, does it? Well, it does when Jared's here. Uh, <laughs> <let's>... <laughs> Hi, Jensen. Hi, Misha. Hey. Um, so, I know you've been working on the boys lately, Jensen, which I'm super excited about. <laughs> so, I wanted to ask you, what is your most memorable moment from being on set of the boys? Oh, okay, I'm well. <laughs> I don't know that I can tell you that without giving away some spoilers. Uh, was it the, the first scene that you shot? Well, that was memorable. How could that not be the? How is it possible that that's not the most memorable? Uh, uh really? Yeah. Right. Oh my God, dude. What? Naked? Yeah. Naked? Yeah. I'm not gonna spoil anything. I'm just gonna say I didn't think that they could do that on television. And they don't. They're doing it on a streaming service. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Um, I can't wait to watch. 
that literally, like, right off the bat, I could tell you three things that I'm like, yeah, you, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Uh, so I can't wait to tell you my experience when you see what the experience was when you see what the final product ends up being. Wow, um, Amazon is going to be pissed at you for spoiling that. <laughs> You're gonna be in big trouble. Really walking the line, aren't I? Um, yeah, let's just say that there there were some there were some memorable moments. Yeah, in, in you know only a few episodes. So yeah, it's it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Thank you. Hi. Hello. So um, if I'm not mistaken, in the most recent episode of Walker, I saw a very distinct pair of bow legs. <laughs> and if I'm right, I think that was you, Jensen. So I know you've got um, a million other projects going on, but um, I was wondering if that means, you know, there's going to be more of you showing up on Walker. <laughs> that was actually Richard Spade, uh, <laughs> a fellow bow legged friend. Uh, you can't sit down, can you? you, you no, you, you I don't. Just, I don't normally sit. Right, you, I like pace around. Do you nervous. pace? Yeah. You want to pace? I, I am pacing. We can. Let's try it. <laughs> I don't need to sit down. <laughs> um. So, yes, yes, that that was me. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Because that is a role that that is going to uh, have. It's going to come out in the storyline. Um, I don't think this season, I think next season. Uh, I could be wrong about that. So, what, is it this season? Yeah. It's the end of this season. Yeah. Okay, so they're going to touch on, on Miles, which is the character. They hadn't cast that role yet. They didn't know who that was going to be, but they were like, yeah, we're going to have to, to get just a, a body double uh, in there. Somebody that's, you know, yay tall and has a, you know, like medium build, whatever it was. And I was like, okay, so we have to cast this person. And they're like, well, yeah, we gotta look at a whole bunch of like background performers. And I was like, well, I'll, I'll do it. And they were like, you'll play Miles? I'm like, hang on. <laughs> hang on. Um, now you've really painted them into a corner because the actor who plays Miles has to be bow legged. <laughs> And, it's, and that's a casting call that's difficult to make. It is. Like, it is. Seeking bow-legged actor. <laughs> seeking uh, six to six to roughly two hundred pound bow-legged actor. Um, yeah. So that's that's why that it was going to be somebody that wasn't in, going to end up being the, the the role, the actor. So we just got some we just got some hack to step in there and do it. Stop it. I'm auditioning. You've, you've got a job. Uh, oh, no, no, he's a barista down at the... Uh, is he? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's got many faces. Two, actually, two faces. Um, anyway, yes, thank you. Hi. Um, so this was originally just for Jensen, but it'll be for both of you. Um, and I'm kind of switch it a little bit because he's just here too. Um, so Jensen, if you could play anyone in the Batman universe, who would you play? And Misha, if you could play anyone in the boys universe, who would you play? Um, well, I mean, Batman. Let's be, Let's be clear about that. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. I mean, I've, I've gotten to do the voice. Yeah. Why not? Why not get to play the bat? Yeah. Maybe somebody over at Gotham Heights could put in a good word for me. Yeah. If that role ever comes up. Uh, I don't know that it will though, because they're pretty. They're pretty particular about that. Um, anyway, yeah, I would. I would definitely have to go with bats. Did Did you see the latest Batman movie? No. Yeah. It's, it's kind of 
great. I know, I know. I'm not ready to. Are you? I'm not ready to invite another Batman into my world. Is it because you are also a Batman? That's kind of yes, it is. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. It is. It's a sensitive subject. Um, you know, us other Batmen, <laughs> we're a little hesitant to invite new ones in. I get it. That makes sense. You know, especially you used to be a vampire. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call him like a seal. Did you see it? Did you? I did see it. I thought it was great. You did you? It. Did you call up and and say, hey, uh, I hear you're doing a new. No, sorry. Hey, I hear you're doing a new Batman. <laughs> um, that would be kind no, of I didn't. Uh, it was after the fact. I said, hey, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what is this shit? <laughs> um, yeah. What, okay, so uh, the boys. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, is are, is the boys universe a universe that it, Eric is creating as he goes? I, he's expanding it. So it was like a comic book series mm -hmm. that he's extrapolating from. Yeah. See, I don't know. I don't know the comic book series. It's essentially, it's it's really all of the the superhero types. Right. You know, so you've got your you got your Superman. You've got your Aquaman. You've got your Flash. You've got it's it's all of those. But archetypally just, speaking, what is your what is yours modeled after? Uh, uh, Captain America. Captain America. Okay. Where is Brianna? <laughs> Since I let Evans have Captain America, <laughs> you're welcome, Chris. Um, this was. Uh, yeah, this this was a good a Boy, good second. That's, that's got, that must have been so much fun. Oh yeah, especially those three moments that I'm talking about. <laughs> oh my gosh, I never told you. That. No, oh. I just know that first moment. I'll, you want? I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you later. Uh, hold your mic up to his ear when you tell him. Oh yeah, yeah. Come here. Let me hold my mic right here while I tell you. Um. Yeah, so it's like pick any pick any superhero. Who who would who would you want to have the the like totally messed up screwed up version of? <clears throat> uh, probably <laughs> Captain America. That sounds pretty great. Can we do a recasting? Is it too late? Too late, Cap. Damn. No, that ship has sailed. Um. Huh. Yeah, cool. What? <laughs> You know, it's amazing. You really embody that role. Like they're like you're playing a superhero, and you're like, "Cool, got it." And then the next time I saw you, you were like, <laughs> <laughs> "Well, because so I was I was flying, I had to fly out to L.A. for these these fittings for the for the uh, for the suit because they they hand build these things. I mean, they're like they're like works of art." Um, LJ, uh, who's the, yeah. the, the super suit uh, costume designer, she's fantastic. Um, and but I had, to, I had to travel out to LA like six six times, six different times for the to kidding? build the suit. No, no shit. And each time, you know, there's more progress. So I stepped around there like, okay, we got to do this, we got to add this. And at some point, I was like, where 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 are you going to put the muscles? <laughs> like, where are those? What do those come into the process? <laughs> and she, not kidding, because if you look at like, like, look, I love Ant, phenomenal actor, but he takes his Homelander suit off, and it's like, what happened? <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and so, so I was like, where, where are the muscles gonna go? And she, the LJ just comes up, she was like, oh, honey, you're gonna bring me some in April. <laughs> That'll light the fire under your pants. That was it. No producer called me and said, we're going to need you to put on 20 pounds. No, nobody, just LJ said, oh, you're going to bring me a few. Yeah. You're going to bring me some extra muscles you're when like, you show up. And I was hey, like, hey, Daniil, I need a freezer full of chicken breasts. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm on an all steak diet for the next four months. <laughs> um, and uh, that's, yeah, that, 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 did, that did happen. And then the Kripke said, don't shave. That was it. He was like, don't, don't shave. Don't get a haircut and don't shave. I see. So you have a lot of body hair. So it's... In the... <laughs> you look like a gorilla. Yeah, 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 basically. Got it. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's how that went down. Um, yeah, I don't know. Where, where, where were we? 
Uh, what are we talking about? Oh, Hi. Keep going. Hi, this is my first time here at one of these. So Welcome. How's it going? How's your first oh, time? Oh, oh, Jared usually asks this. Is a, I forgot. How many people here is this first time at a con? Wow, okay. All right. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's, uh, no, you're not. It's an epic, epic failure at this point. No, I'm kidding. Um, hi. So I apologize if this has been asked before, which it's a question for both of you. Um, but over the last, over all 15 seasons, were there any storylines with uh, involving your characters' development or personality that the writers didn't explore further that you wish they would have for either one of your characters or any on the show? Yeah, I, I think yeah, my <laughs> you wish you had a puppet, right? I think that Castiel could well have been human for longer uh, because I, I don't think he got to explore as many different versions of what exploring uh, humanity could have been. Like, for example, he ate toothpaste, which was great, but it would have been nice for him to really learn to brush his teeth. Yes, it would. Wait. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't get to have a whole a, a lot of sex, which was a little disappointing. Um, there was, a, you know, there were some some things that I think got we 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 breezed over what could have been a more interesting arc for the character. Um, that's my my one complaint I would say over the years. So I was like, yeah, I feel like we got out of that too quickly. What about you? Uh, yeah, a couple. Uh, purgatory. Wish we could have stuck there a little longer. Yeah. I, don't know, I I really enjoyed that. Like I just thought that was that was kind of a, a different element. It was filmed differently. They they used a different uh, uh, different film treatments on that particular, giving a different look. Uh, I just yeah I liked it. Um, but what's that? It could have been a whole episode. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean I think it could have been like a whole season, multiple episodes. I, I just I thought that was really cool. But they. Uh, um, you know, they had to get they had to get Dean back to topside, and that was that. Um, also, I think uh, Michael. Yeah. Uh, Dean is Michael. Um, would have been would have been cool to, to last a little longer and really explore that character, but I believe they had to they had to get rid of that. Or maybe that was Dean and Dean. They had to do something for the uh, three hundredth episode. Or, it was Dean and Dean, yeah. They had, to, they had to wrap that one up quick because they had to get me back to normal for the 300th episode that was coming up, so. I remember when I, people ask sometimes, what was, your, what was the worst day of shooting? And it was when we were crawling out of purgatory. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. They had yeah, those yeah. giant Ritter fans. Ritter fans. And it was like being, it was like being in, the, in the exhaust of a jet engine. Mm -hmm. And they put it right on the, on the gravelly dirt. And we were just getting like rocks and sand just spit in our faces. Pepper and all like, day. Like, could, could, like could, we're choking, couldn't breathe. Yeah. Black snot was dripping out of our noses. <laughs> and they were like, this is great, guys. It's looking great. <laughs> like, all right, cool. But my retinas are both scratched right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, that was uh, that was a. It was hot. It was hot. So we were too. we were like sweating, and so all the dust and gravel were like sticking to us too, which was just made it that much better. That was great. Uh, but it looked great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, those those were a couple. Was there one that you wished would have gotten on gone on a little longer? Well, I. I agree. Yeah. That one. <laughs> It all went on too long. Purgatory was one that I was thinking of for Dean's character. I yeah. am a writer, so and I'm writing a screenplay right now. We'll talk about. But um, uh, I thought the relationship between Benny and Dean could have been explored more while, <laughs> while in Purgatory. And I think that there were was an opportunity for the writers to create a couple short-lived characters in Purgatory as mm -hmm. well that I was disappointed in not seeing. But it, I think Purgatory felt like a different type of show. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Which was why I wanted to kind of explore that for a little bit. Um, 
and I agree, Benny, uh, Benny was certainly one of my favorite characters as a fan of the show. Like, yeah. The, yeah. I, I just, I thought Ty did an awesome job, and I, I, you know, big fan of Ty as well, so. Um, but I thought that character and that relationship I thought was really, really unique. Um, but again, like that's not what the show is. The show is about the brothers, so I had, had to get back to my... And the angel, probably. I mean, not really. Um, <laughs> so anyway, thank you. Good luck with the screenplay. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Thank you for doing Book Bash, Misha. I really enjoyed that. And oh, good. A book-related question for Jensen, but I'd love to hear your answer as well. Uh, Jensen, in the past you've said The Fountainhead is your favorite book. Is that still true? Do you have any new recommendations? Uh, uh, I think that was just the last one I had attempted to read. Um, I, uh, I'm, not a, I'm, not a, uh, I'm not a real big book reader. I don't, I don't read a whole lot. Uh, it's no surprise to many people. Um, and uh, I just, I, as many scripts and stuff that I pour over and read through, I you know, reading is not something that uh, has ever has ever attracted me for for like a, a pastime. You know, something to do to uh, to relax or whatever. So um, yeah, I'm it's amazing to me how much the like constant distractions of cell phones and other like streaming services and everything encroaches on reading time too. Like I remember, I don't know if this is true of you, but like when I was in. High school and college, like when I was much younger, I would read much. More. I'd, I'd spend a lot more time reading because there was like the time for it. But now that time gets co-opted by all of these other little distractions and interferences. And well, it makes so it, like it silent kids. films were, you know, just coming around. That's so. right. um, if you wanted, if you wanted entertainment that wasn't in a book form, you had to go down to the picture house and listen to. <laughs> They were, they were playing on the accordion and, and to accompany the, the black and, and then And then talkies came and really yeah. kind of encroached again on your... Right. On your, <laughs> um, you know, it really, it really has changed. I think it's cha changing how brains work, though, in general. Like, I'm looking at my kids and comparing that to how my childhood when you would, we didn't have anything else to do but to read. And now my kids are like, there, there are so many possible things for them to do at any given moment. And reading is, it, it's hard for it to, you know, take center stage sometimes, um, which is kind of tragic, really, because it's a great way to like fire up your imagination, I think. I, I don't know. I, I, I wish that I read more. I wish that I, but I, I, um, uh, I mean, I don't know. Can I say this? I'll say this. Sure. I had I had a learning issue when I was young, and um, it, nothing. I think it was. I mean, they diagnosed it as uh, ADD back then because that's what they diagnosed everything with. Uh, really? Me too. Yeah. So, so I would I would read a page in a book that I was that I had to read because it was giving a book report in English or something like that, and I would read the whole page. I would read every word, and then I'd get to the end of the page and be like, I have no idea what I just read. And I, I struggle with that today. Um, I, it takes me a very, very long time to read anything. Um, and when I read scripts, it, it takes me a, an extremely long amount of time to do so because I'm reading it very slowly so that I comprehend everything that I'm reading. Uh, if I try to read fast, I'll have no idea what, I'm, what I've just read. And so that always, uh, th that, that was always a struggle for me. And, and, I, and I just never, um, I was never really a big book reader because of it. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm a special ed teacher, so I really, my heart really hurts for what you guys are saying up there. But my question is, um, in the show, Sam and Dean are four years apart. I think their age is when they started 22 and 26. That's about the same age as you and Jared. I wonder whether the brothers' ages were already set or whether they wrote the brothers' ages to match you and Jared. Yeah. Yeah. What a way to get attention for a question that's not about you. No, 
Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> When you play that music, I have to strip. <laughs> um, getting back to your question, uh, I, I I believe it was uh, it was written after the fact uh, and, and to correlate more with our our actual age difference. Yeah, to kind of match us up a little bit. So um, that was, uh, yeah, that, that wasn't established in the pilot. So that was established later, and I think they did just kind of like, how old, what's, what's the age difference with Jared and Jensen? Let's just do that. Yeah. They did the same thing for Castiel after I came on the show. They said, yeah. he's been around for thousands of years, they said. <laughs> so, yeah, he would know what the picture shows right. were. <laughs> yeah. He watched uh, sea animals evolve to uh, uh, walk on land. <laughs> wow, well, thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, first of all, I want to thank you, Jensen, um, for how you and Jared portrayed the loss of a sibling on the show. Um, I lost my brother back in 2017, so your show was really helpful for me, um, especially at the end. It gave me a lot of peace um, and things like that. So thank you for that. Um, Sorry for your loss. Thank you. Um, and of course, uh, Supernatural was something I was really excited to just come back to and, and watch. So my question for both of you is what is something that's really exciting coming up for you, either work or with your families, that you're looking forward to? Um, I am very, I'm, I'm excited about the new show that I'm working on, uh, Gotham Knights. I'm excited to play a totally different character. Um, I'm actually finding that I'm kind of excited to spend some time in a different city and get to know a new city and, um, and, and, and actually spend a little bit of time on my own, which is not something that I've done a lot of. Um, so I'm kind of excited about like the inner journey that that's going to bring with it. You were in Toronto quarantining for like, you were stuck, you were like completely isolated there for months, right? Um, did you go crazy? I was already you crazy yeah. going into the situation. That's right. So that's right. That's right. Nothing changed. Right. Um, yeah, it's an interesting kind of thing. Like you're almost in a, you're almost in a cell, right? Like with the... Well, it was 14 days of quarantine in, in a... Uh, an apartment that I had never been to before. Uh, they were like, you're going to land, you're going to spend two days in a hotel at the airport until your test clears, and then you have to continue to spend the rest of your 14 days wherever your, you know, wherever your uh, uh, accommodations are. And so yeah, so I checked into this, or went into this apartment that I found and the production had helped find, and was like, okay, I'm not going to leave this threshold for two weeks. And I did. I stayed there for two weeks and just did a million push-ups. Uh -huh. <laughs> that was a secret. Yep. It was quarantine. <laughs> it was quarantine. Just sheer I, boredom. That was it. Um, I finished Netflix and then I just did push-ups. That's. Um, I. Uh, um, I'm also looking forward to a show that I'm currently working on or not necessarily in front of the camera, but behind the camera, we're doing uh, uh, the Winchesters. Uh, which is uh, exciting to expand the supernatural universe a bit. Um, and I hope that uh, everything goes right. I came here from that set, and I'll be flying back to that set tonight. And uh, um, it's, uh, it's going really well, which I quickly realized is uh, if everything is going right, which pilot episodes, if you know nothing goes wrong and everything goes right, a producer has nothing to do. Like I, because I, producing it takes place in the beginning, like you're putting everything together and finding the locations and getting the cast and doing all that stuff. But then once you're actually on the set and it's been working, you kind of are just there waiting to put.
put out fires, and if there's no fires, it's like, wow. So, being on camera, you feel like, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm out on the field playing. When you're directing, you feel like you're coaching, like you're there. You're, as a producer, I'm like the GM of the box who's like, is the game over yet? Is, uh... <laughs> so, uh, but it is, it is wild and, and crazy to think of that, uh, you know, an idea uh, from two years ago is now being laid out in front of me before my eyes, and it's really cool, and I hope you all, I hope everything goes right and it gets picked up and gets into a series just like God of Nights, and I hope you all enjoy it. If you don't like it, then that's fine. Feel free to hate watch every episode. <laughs> They're tough shoes to fill because all these people love Supernatural, and if the, if they don't yeah. love the prequel, you're like they're going to come burn your house down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, well, if they don't if they don't love the prequel, then they really weren't fans in the first place. <laughs> I like your style. That's right. That's right. Shame on them. That's right. Shame, shame yeah. on them for not having the vision. Exactly. To like how dare this. they not accept? Shame on them. It makes me sick. It really is. It's bullies. <laughs> Just bullies. Anyone who says anything negative about your prequel is a canceled. Bully, is a bully. <laughs> canceled. Go home. I love it already. <laughs> it's like I love it already. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Jensen. Hi, Misha. I'm Allison. I'm very new to Supernatural. I just finished season four. So oh my goodness. It, it's interesting. But you already have a uniform. I know. I wonder wow. who it could Good be. Good job. Uh, spoiler alert. He dies. How oh, 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 oh. <laughs> The vast majority of the audience didn't know that, Jensen. Another spoiler alert. I die. About 130 times. Yes. So, that's unrelated, but... <laughs> that holds everyone together, if the Winchesters or Cass had a dog, what would it be? <laughs> had a dog? <laughs> I, you mean a dog that was like riding around in the Apollo with them? Probably ideally something like a Great Dane. Something that just fills out the vehicle um, and, and keeps us warm. Yeah. I, I was going to say a Shih Tzu. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we need two dogs. Mm -hmm. Um, if you if you could choose a dog for the brothers and Cass, what kind of dog would it be? Uh, I just rescued a dog from animal testing. He's a little beagle, so I'm biased. I think Cass would do good with a beagle. A beagle? Yeah. His name's Jesse. He's great. Um, I think the Winchesters would do good with like a golden retriever or something, especially Sam. I have a question, a follow-up question. If Sam and Dean and Cass were dogs, what kind of dog would they be? Let's see. Um, Hi, can of worms. Let's go with Sam first. What kind of dog would Sam be? You know, I can see Sam as my beagle. Very hyper, doesn't pay attention, doesn't listen. No, no, I said Sam, not Jared. Stubborn, like a beagle. Uh, Bring the boots. Dean. Dean would be, I feel like something intimidating but soft inside, like a German Shepherd. I think, I think you're right about that. I think it's a German Shepherd. And, uh, Castiel? Pug. Uh, pug. A pug? Uh, Somebody escorted that man out of the room. <laughs> Any dog with a curly tail, basically. Is. Um, maybe a poodle? Because <laughs> That's my favorite question. You only asked that question because you knew where it was going. I did. Jerk. <laughs> I don't like that question anymore. Oh, man. Point. No, you may not explain yourself. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, she is, you know, cosplaying you, so you win point two. Um, thank you. 
<laughs> that was fun. Hi. Hi. Um, everybody's really excited about both of your new roles. Uh, I was just wondering yeah. who you think would win in a fight, if it would be Soldier Boy or Harvey Dent. Let's see it. What kind of powers well, the problem does is, Two Face have? Two Face is just crazy. That's it. That's his. Oh, he doesn't have. Which, powers. by the way, goes a long way. Yeah. yeah, that's true. But it sounds like you're also crazy. True. Uh, yeah. um, and, and Soldier Boy and, is crazy. It, it, right. <laughs> and, and and you're possessed of some superpowers, mm -hmm. which complicates things for Harvey Dent, who is also yeah, he's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go with Soldier Boy. I'm, I'm gonna sadly agree on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. No, no more questions. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Um, before I forget, I promised my mom if I had the chance, Jensen, she loved you in Days of Our Lives. <laughs> Thank you. I love you both very much. I'm very inspired by both of you. Um, I graduated college last year. I'm Congratulations. Thank you. I'm trying to just find my way through the world and whatnot, but my question is... Good luck with that project. Yeah, thank you. It doesn't get easier. And like artistic dreams and all that, but what is your advice for persevering through like rejection and negativity and all that self-doubt? Just give up. Never keep fighting. <laughs> There's so many times when I look back at my younger self and I and I think, oh, if I had just given up. <laughs> and you'd be in so such a better, better place. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're ready to give up now. You, you just like, you're so dis crushingly disappointed. I can't believe I looked up to those assholes. <laughs> I should have given them up. <laughs> um, I will, uh, I'll attempt to give you a, a little bit of advice uh, in that life is, is a game of numbers. Uh, it's, it's, you gotta just keep, keep trying. It, it, the, more you, the more you try something, the more you do something, the more you, you figure out. Um, it's, a, it's something that I, uh, when I get asked, you know, how, how, how can I be an actor? I'm like, just do everything as much as you can and keep rolling that dice. And, uh, and eventually, when it hits and you get something, you'll have learned so much from all the rejections or all the, the missed opportun or, you know, opportunities that, did, that didn't happen that you'll be ready. So I, I, I kind of treat life the same way. It's like you just keep, you keep doing things and you keep, you keep grinding it out kind of thing. It's, uh, it'll be a struggle at times, but... That makes the that makes the good times even that much more sweeter. So, I would say also if you're if you're too focused on the outcome, I found this for myself anyway. When I was like, I need to get that job, I need to get that part, um, I need you know, I need this show to go, whatever it is. Um, that fixating on the outcome is actually really uh, was really unhealthy for me. Whereas if I just focus on doing my best at every step of the way, that's it. Do what you what is within the realm of your control. There are lots of things that are not in the realm of your control. There are going to be a lot of times when they're going to go with somebody who's a lot older or a lot younger or who is a, a different gender than you are, and that's totally out of your control. But you can show up and do the very best that you can do, and know that that within the sphere of your control, you're doing you're doing your best. That that gives that for me anyway gave me a lot of comfort because I used to struggle with rejection like I was n I didn't I did not like it and I got to a point where I was like I'm okay because I actually know I did my best and that feels good so there's my check and touching on touching on what you just said um, reminds me of, of uh, when I was when I was a young actor and I was auditioning and I was getting rejected and I wasn't getting these parts I was like what's wrong with me and it is very much that like it, that's not that's out of my control. So I, I switched my way of thinking of every time I went into an audition, that was my final performance. And I walked out and I was like, what's next? 
And every now and again, I'd get a call and be like, guess what, they want you to come back and do it again. I'm like, oh, okay, I already moved on, but happy to go back and do it again. Then that was my final performance. And I'm like, okay, what's next? Until they were like, they want to give you the job. And I'm like, oh, great, I was already moving on to the next thing. So that just helped me mentally of like, you go in for a job interview, they're like, boom, later on the table, okay, let's find the next job interview. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there we go. How are you? Hi. Hello. Thank you for coming, and Misha, thank you for joining, because I've actually tried to ask you this question like three times already. <laughs> Last night at dinner. Next yes, question. next question. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, it's not bad. But is it strange for you back then when you first started, or now even, to see yourself on people's shirts as you're walking past <laughs> and interacting with them? No, that feels perfectly natural. <laughs> Super natural? Supernatural? We've been trying the whole... I, I don't know, that, that, that doesn't, that never gets totally normal. Uh, it's uh... You wanna know what's weird though? Is the degree to which we acclimate to things. Like now, I walk around and I see my face on a t-shirt and I'm like, oh yeah, right. Like, as if that's not the strangest thing imaginable. Um, it is kind of bizarre, the way that we step into the various roles that we're afforded in life and it becomes, it, you know, whatever is happening becomes the norm. And it's strange. I walked into Hot Topic a few years ago. Oh, oh, oh. And I looked around and I was instantly Homer Simpson. <laughs> Get me out of here. What is this stuff? It was bizarre. It's, uh, yeah. But Misha's right. It, it is, you know, certainly in this setting, it's like, oh, yeah. There I am. I try to shield myself from it. Kind of like what you're talking about. Like you, you don't, I, you don't, it's not like we go into Hot Topic and are like, look, there I am, there I am, there I am. This is awesome. It's like, uh, this isn't right. It's not this I shouldn't be looking at. Um, same, same thing uh, when I walk in front of a mirror naked. <laughs> same reaction. Just when I, yeah, it looks like this. I don't want this is Misha walking in front of a mirror naked. collectively decided that clothing is best suited for you. Misha, everyone in the Misha, makeup trailer wants you to get dressed. Trish is mad at you. Trish is mad at you. And then Misha goes, Thanks for noticing me. It's true. Really brown <laughs> and then he goes and puts his trench coat on. Uh, My sister, she loves you, Jensen. She's over there. My sister. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> From the back. Um, my question is, what's your go-to movie that you could watch over and over again and like never get sick of? Mm. I have watched, the movies that I've watched the most are uh, Groundhog Day, which I think is a fitting movie to watch over and over again. Uh, the Man Who Knew Too Little. Uh, which is another Bill Murray movie. Yeah. It's fantastic, underrated. I don't know why everyone doesn't watch it all the time. And probably The Big Lebowski. Oh, yeah. I, I, I can't get enough of any of those. That Brad really ties the room. I'm trying to think of like different genres, because there's several, right? right? But like, 
pick a genre, like uh, for, for action, uh, I could watch any of the Indiana Jones. Yeah. For uh, comedy, um, there's many, but I'll just pick Tropic Thunder. <laughs> watch that one a lot. Uh, for like drama, uh, do people, can we still even get Tropic Thumb Thunder? Isn't mm. it like, there's a, a blackface character in that? Can mm. we even watch that anymore? Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. It's yeah. probably yeah. like, it's probably it's removed still. from the streaming services at this point, is my guess. No, it's still there? No. Yes, you, you just watched it? <laughs> Shame on you. <laughs> she dressed up as that character for Halloween last year. <laughs> just kidding. Um, and, and then, uh, No Country for Old Men. Is, uh, yeah, that's a good if one. I mean really any Coen Brothers Lebowski, um, like if that's just on, I'm like, well, there goes the next two hours of my life. So yeah, what about you? Um, I love any Harry Potter film. <laughs> Did you say the new Harry Potter film? Any, any. Oh, them. any Harry Potter. Yeah, there are eight, right? Yeah. yeah. Boom. Knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I read all the books. Yeah. <laughs> Not a one. Not a page. <laughs> uh, thank you. Hi. Hello, welcome to New Jersey. Thank you. I'd like to thank you, we're all here because of the wonderful alchemy that happened between the creator, the writers, and such a talented cast. And asking you as actors, with both your characters from Supernatural and the new roles that you're moving on to, internally, that's how you connected us to your characters, what was the easiest characteristic of your character for you to portray and the most difficult to internalize and bring and make real for us? Great question. Um, I'll, I'll start. Uh, I would say the easiest was probably the grumpiness of Dean Winchester. <laughs> and not because I'm grumpy, but because uh -huh. I, I think I was able to be grumpy through him, which enabled me to not be as grumpy in real life. Um, and then the difficult one was probably... Um, you were working out your anger issues on set yeah. all the time? Yeah, great. Not anger, just... just grumpy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Just, just my Mark Shepard issues. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and then probably the most, the most difficult one was... Uh, and this is, I, I've said this before, was dealing with, was being Dean while Sam was Sola Sam. Because it was hard for me to play Dean relating to his brother when his brother wasn't his brother. And I felt like I was uh, kind of like lost because I didn't have that relationship on screen that I had, that I'd relied on with Jared. And, and which is a testament to him and how well he did it because I, I was struggling on camera because I didn't have that relationship available to me. So I, that was probably the, one of the biggest struggles I ever found. And it was surprising to me. I'm like, get your crap together, dude. Like, come on. Um, but it was just, yeah, it was like all of a sudden I, I you know, was, was playing blindfolded and I, it was difficult for me. That's interesting. I, I, I had a couple of things. I, I, what is coming to mind is not terribly flattering to myself, but I'm going to tell this anyway. Um, when uh, when Castiel came on the show, he was like the, the character was written as this like warrior of God, right? Like he was a soldier and a fighter, and very quickly the character was at, you know over the next few episodes was rewritten as this sort of like awkward, socially awkward, dorky fish out of water which I think was the writer's adaptation of what I was bringing to the table. <laughs> well, it, it went from like, yeah, some fucking badass angel to, nobody knows how to deal with this weird character. 
And I think that, that that ended up really like manifesting quite physically at one point. I've told this story before, but um, you were at the monitors in the other room, and it was Sam, Sam was, was, what's his name? The, the, he, he was uh, possessed by Gadriel. And Gadriel, whatever. And, <laughs> and, and Bob Singer w was directing, and he liked those like grindhouse, like d direct, like 1970s style shots. And this, his, his idea was like, I was going to punch right at the, the lens, and that was supposed to be me punching out Gadriel, right? You were at the monitors. We did the first take. You're in the other room. We're in the kitchen of this house. And you and Bob and everybody else back at the monitor starts laughing. And, you're, and then you come out and you're like, that was hilarious. And, and I was like, what was hilarious? And you looked at me like, oh, oh, you're joking? And then I got the playback. yelling <laughs> like maybe he could just do this <laughs> Southpaw too, so like he 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 knew he knows how to how to throw a punch and, and uh <laughs> he couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> and like to make Bob laugh is, is like Yeah, you know, he doesn't laugh. That's a high bar. Yeah. <laughs> and he was just it was the it was the silent Bob laugh. It was the it was the <laughs> And like he he'll tear up, he'll he'll like if, if someone gets him it's it's fantastic to watch, yeah. and that got him really good. Yeah, I'm really happy to have brought him to joy. <laughs> I don't know why the face has to be this too. <laughs> uh, was there a question somewhere? Can we strike that from the record? <laughs> um, so, I object. So you're saying, you're saying the, uh, the physicality of Castiel was easy for you to... You, you mean... <laughs> so what was, yes, his posture. That was the easiest part of playing Castiel. <laughs> what was the... What character uh, of Castiel's most difficult? I mean, throwing a punch. The throwing the punch was... Thank was, you. We, I feel like we already went over this. So. <laughs> I don't know how much more badly you want me to feel about myself. <laughs> Thank you. Uh-oh. Okay. You go get her. All right, this is the last question. Let's go. Let's go bring him up on stage. Yeah, oh, all right. This is the last one.
We'll take it through that one. You weren't, weren't joining. It's <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've heard this from backstage and had no before. idea what the hell and was happening. I had up. no idea what was going on. <laughs> this is good to know. I mean, it's it's yeah. peeling back the curtain mm -hmm. and, yeah, and yeah. seeing the dirty things that go on. The, yeah. the, the gross, tired the, bits that we see, continue to do. Seeing the sausage made. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh! <laughs> I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Hey, that was me and um, <laughs> Supernatural family, uh, say hi to Jessica. Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Jessica, hi. what is your question? Uh, my question is out of there's so many heart wrenching scenes in the show. What is the one that got you guys the most? Oh, well. That's a good question. That's a good one. Bish? My declaration, sir, Cass's declaration of love. Guys. <laughs> That was very, that, that got me. It also was, it was the scene that I had to like put myself in a little bubble and really like protect my actor self for. On Supernatural, we, this, this, I'm revealing something that I probably shouldn't be revealing, but I'm going to. We um, fucked around a lot on set. Yeah. <laughs> really? Wow. Really? Yeah, it's true. Shot. It's really true. <gasps> Um, but that, that was a scene and a night where I really just had to like let myself be in that scene and and I was it was also my last scene on the show ever so it was like it was Cass's goodbye it was my goodbye to the cast and crew and it was it was it was goodbye uh, to a long run and a big chapter in life it was very very meaningful to me in a lot of ways. Rob Hader was our stunt coordinator. I was just like, I did something I never did on Supernatural, which is like, I just went off into a dark corner of the stages and sat on a folding chair and just like stayed in the emotional place. And Rob Hader saw me like off in the shadows and he was like, just, just took care of me from a distance. He was just like making sure nobody came near me. And I never asked him to do anything. I never like, never said a word. He was just like like creating this little bubble around me, and then when you know, when, for our first AD would like call us back to set, he would say, "Ready for you," like, and then escorted me so that nobody would like bother me. And it was really it was, it was, it was such like a, it was such a sweet thing to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that for me was definitely that was it. I uh, I had because it was such a a, a, a pivotal moment on the just the whole sh the arc of the show was you know was Misha's last scene Misha's goodbye Castiel's goodbye to Dean and, and um, I had uh, I don't know if I told you I had Maisie our, our assistant props um, I gave her my phone and I said will you just record some of these takes from from offset and you can hear her whimpering Aww. literally crying while she's while she's recording, and I, I've got some like, oh really? Yeah, because you know when you see it cut together and stuff, it's but it was just, it was just you and I standing there, surrounded by lights and a camera, and it was you know just two guys hugging it out and, and saying goodbye. It was really, it's, it's Spade was directing, mm -hmm. and he would he would come back from the monitors, and he was like, yeah, tears were coming down as everybody was kind of crying, and it was just like it was one of those moments. Yep. It was like the end for a lot of things for a lot of people. And um, it, it felt real. I mean, it's, this is a, this is cheesy, and it's and it's difficult to articulate. It's it from if you're not really within it, it, it within the experience. But we played these characters for so long that they became a part of us. And it, that sounds really cheesy and actory, but it's actually true. Like when when Cass was saying "I love you" and goodbye, it was like heartbreaking. For me, yeah. like I couldn't discern who was like like feeling the feelings at that point, and I remember, yeah, I mean, there, we we've had conversations about this, like, you know, th that that dream you had about uh, Sam and Dean and the end of the show, oh, like, yeah. that and, and when you told me and Jared that, all three of us teared up, right? Like we we just became, we became so emotionally enmeshed with these characters uh, over time that 
that these things actually felt really meaningful, at least to me. But I think that I think I'm speaking for you as well. No, and, and in that scene, and I remember, uh, <clears throat> I remember in that scene, and, and when, on your coverage, watching you give this beautiful performance. But I was also watching my friend say goodbye, and that was because there were some there were some expressions in there that were Castiel. And uh, and I remember seeing that, and that I think that broke me more than the scene itself was was witnessing witnessing Misha's goodbye to Castiel and goodbye to the show, and that was whew, yeah I mean it get get misty right now just thinking about it. Uh, in in the same vibe, it would have been my goodbye scene, um, which was you know, very similar. It was uh, um, I didn't go away. I didn't. I didn't sit anywhere because I didn't need to because the whole crew left and they, they, they were there for like the first take I think and then I saw just boxes of Kleenex and tissues being passed around and I remember like Robin our props and Moira our on set costumes and, and they like literally had to leave set because they were like just tears uh, watching that scene. And you also couldn't go in because you were impaled to a wall. This is true. This is true. Yeah. God damn it, Rob! Yeah, I didn't really have a choice on that one. That's, that's, that's true. Um, yeah. And we're back. Uh, that was yeah. That, that was that was a uh, that was a hard one, and that one certainly left because it was it was you know Jensen saying goodbye to not just uh, Dean, but also saying goodbye to Sam. You know, and as a fan of the show, and as a fan of this, this, these, these brothers and these characters and these relationships, uh, you know, that scene and the the impalement scene um, were uh, really difficult. I, I I did tell Bob, who directed the the uh, finale, I said, "Listen, man, I got about three takes in me. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna have." Much left after that because this is uh, this is gonna this is gonna take it this is gonna take it out of me. And he's like, "That's all I need." So, yeah, I think I, think I did three takes, um, and it was uh, yeah, that was that was that was rough. What about you, Rob? What, what's what's the scene you remember the most since you're here? <laughs> um, I mean, in terms of emotional, you know, for all of us, that last season there were a lot of, well, this is the last time we'll do this. This is the last time we'll do this, and. And it wasn't just the actors feeling it. it. Like you said, the crew was right there, also experienced. Like people would break into tears just talking about these scenes coming up that you were going to have to shoot. And so for me, it was very emotional. Even though it was like the last thing I shot was like me killing that dog. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's one of your favorites. I know, everybody. I know. Thank you, big fan. Of my work, but um, I uh, <laughs> no, but it, that was it was emotional because like that was it. Then it was like, it was a nothing little scene, really. All I had to do was just sort of stand out in the field and be like, you know, hi or whatever, and be an asshole. And, but, and then that was it, and you came out and you kind of announced everybody that's Rob's last scene, and like, that. it was just like, you know, I, I'm a recurring character, so I, I was not there for seasons in a row, but then, but you all are such a part of my life, you know? It, it, it was always, Supernatural was always there for me if I needed to go back home, it was there, you know what I mean? And then to think, oh, wow, okay, it's really gone. This is it. So that, for me, was my, personally, my most emotional. The, uh, the scene where we drive away from you. Yeah. And you're on the ground. Yeah. And you're, you're yelling, don't leave me. Don't leave me, yeah. That was hard. Yeah. Because that was really kind of your goodbye scene. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I remember, you know, we're, we're like, screw you, and we get in the car and drive off. Uh, but I remember, like, Jared and I got in the car and it was like, we, we just we talked about that, the weight of, of what we're doing, like driving away, and, and it, it was, it was a, that was a heavy moment. That, 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 that was, yeah, literally. And you had never done that. Yeah. You had never gone, you know, there. To, to, that, to that extreme right. of, you know, begging and pleading and stuff. And yeah. so that to, to hear you, like, screaming out as we're driving away, it was like, oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah, because we're all such soldiers really on the same team, really, when it comes it. down to it's hard to yeah. leave a man down kind of thing. It was, yeah, it was difficult to do. Yeah. Um, 
Thank you for yeah. your question. Thanks. Everybody, that was the last question. That was the very last question. All right, that was it. There's no more questions. That's it, Jersey. If you've got a question, write it down, drop it in the box, and we won't read it. That's the last question. That was terrible. It was, it was really awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you nailed it. Uh, thanks, New Jersey. Thank you, Misha Collins and Jets Michael. That's pretty great, huh?